I'm going to demonstrate a little bit different technique this week, modeling the inner cavity of an object and then using the thickness tool to build the walls around it. I say thickness because that's the term that FreeCAD prefers. I'm not really sure how that came about since most other CAD packages refer to that as a shell. Arguably, shell is a better name for it, but if FreeCAD wants to call it a thickness, that's hardly the end of the world. I'm going to be modeling a vacuum cleaner crevice tool. Yes, I know there's already several videos out there showing you how to make a crevice tool, but I'm going to change it up just a little bit by also designing the coupling to the vacuum hose. Since my vacuum is a shark, I'm going to model it to fit that. As you can see, unlike some vacuum cleaners, the connection is actually keyed, and so the attachment will have to be designed to match. First, we need a few measurements. The obvious first measurement is the diameter of the pipe itself. I also need to measure the height of the key, but because the top of the key is curved and there's no clear and easy place to rest the caliper, it might be a little bit hard to measure it accurately. But I can measure the height of the key and the pipe together and do the rest with math. Now I'll measure the linear width of the key. Notably, although the top of the key is curved as part of a circle, the sides are squared rather than being radial. We can see that when I put the calipers on the sides and see that they run parallel to the jaws. Finally, I'll measure the depth that the vacuum hose goes into the attachment, and that'll do it. I'm going to start the model by building a profile sketch on the XY plane. I'll start with the simple part, create a circle for the pipe. Constrain the diameter to 45.5 millimeters. Now the key. The top of the key is curved as part of a circle, so I'll create a circle that will include the top of the key. The only measurement we have, 48.7 millimeters, is not the diameter of that circle. Instead, it's the diameter of the vacuum pipe plus the height of the key. So first we need to find the height of the key itself, which is just 48.7 millimeters minus 45.5 millimeters, or 3.2 millimeters. That's going to be a radial measure. So let's take the 45.5 again and divide by 2, yielding a radius. Add back in the 3.2 millimeter height of the key, giving a radius of 25.95. I'll just move the callouts a little bit so we can see a bit more clearly now. Next, the sides of the key. I'll just drop in a couple of lines, making sure the endpoints are coincident with the circles and that they're constrained to vertical. I measured them to be 18.62 millimeters apart, so I'll just select them and set a horizontal length of 18.62. I'm going to want those centered on the y-axis of the sketch. Because of an odd quirk in the interaction between having points coincident to a circle and symmetric to a line, I'm actually going to need to drop in a construction point coincident with the y-axis and make the side symmetrical to that construction point. Looking good. All I need to do now is take the trim tool and cut away the parts that don't look like the profile. So we have a profile of the vacuum cleaner hose. Now to flesh it out. I need a depth of 33 millimeters, so I will extrude the sketch by that amount. So this is a model of the vacuum cleaner hose and nozzle, but what we need is the surrounding connector. A natural way to do that is through a thickness. Select our extrude and click Thickness. I want the walls to be 2 millimeters thick, and I need the two ends open. Looking at it, I can see that as with many complex shapes, the joint type arc is going to give the engine fits. So I'll try an intersection. That looks a lot better, but I can see we're going to have another problem. We do want an opening for the hose to go in, and we'll be attaching a cylinder to the other end to form the crevice tool. 
but that's going to leave an opening at the top of the keyway for all of the vacuum to leak through. So really what I want is for only the bottom face to be open, and I'll cut a hole through the other side. So come back to the faces, and this time I'll select only the bottom face. As you can see, we now have an opening for the hose, and we have the back of the keyway closed off. This is much closer to what we want, but of course we also need an opening for the vacuum to flow through. I'll go to a top view and create a sketch on the plane face. Now I'm going to go to the model tab and I'm going to hide the thickness, go into the extrude and make the sketch visible. The reason for that is that now I can pull in the inner circle representing the pipe itself as external geometry. Then create a circle on the center and let the auto constraint choose tangent to the external geometry. It not only matches the diameter of the vacuum nozzle, but it's also parametric should I need to change the diameter later. I'll close the sketch and I'm going to bring back the thickness. Now I can see the sketch on it. I'm going to extrude that 3 millimeters. It ended up protruding from the thickness, but we actually needed to go into the thickness, so I'll just reverse it. Select our thickness, select the extrude, and cut. As you can see, now we have the keyway neatly closed off, and we have our opening to allow airflow through the attachment. A note here, as we start thinking about the design, it's tempting to design the inside of the connector, then fuse the shape of the inside of the tool, and do a single thickness operation on the whole thing. In fact, I tried that while playing around with it. It turns out that the geometry around the closure of the keyway in the front meeting with the thickness of the tool itself is problematic. It's much better to keep the geometry simple here, and then we can fuse an additional thickness onto it later. So we have a connector now, but we need a nozzle to attach to it. In a 3D printing project, this might actually be a good time to print a test fit using the cheapest filament you have, or even some scraps. But we're discussing CAD, so let's move on to the next step. I'm going to start with the cylinder protruding from the connector and shape it from there. There is an option to simply add a primitive cylinder and set its attachment to the end of the connector, but perhaps even easier and more parametric, I can reuse the same sketch that cut the hole into the connector to extrude my cylinder. So I'll come down, open up the cut, open up the extrude, and find sketch 001. I'll make it visible so I can see what I'm doing. It's already part of an extrude, but don't be deceived by the hierarchy of display of the model. It's not as if Extrude 001 has consumed Sketch 001. It's just based on it, and there's no reason another Extrude can't be based on it as well. So that's extruded again, this time to 200 millimeters. Since I'm not reversing this Extrude, it protrudes out of the connector as we might have expected. This is obviously not our final shape. Don't be concerned that we have a zero width overlap with the connector. Once again, we're modeling the inside of the ultimate object, and so once we apply a thickness to this, there will be plenty of mating surface. Now a sketch to shape the cylinder into a crevice tool. Oops, I want the sketch attached to the YZ plane, not the object, so I'll deselect everything and try again. I'll zoom out a bit so I can see everything. Now I'll select View Section so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start with a line that will define the height of the opening slot of the tool. Since this will be a tool to cut the shape into the cylinder, we want to make it larger than needed to avoid any edge cases. In addition, when I add an arc, I want it large enough that the curve is gradual to give a streamlined look. So now I put in the arc using the endpoints of the vertical lines, and I'll just pick a point to define the radius. Clearly this is a little bit rough, so let's clean it up with some constraints. I want the arc to be perpendicular to the outer edge, and I want it to be tangent to the inner edge. 
We have a rough shape. Move things around a bit because we don't want to cut into the connector. I want the height of the opening to be 10 millimeters, so I'll set a horizontal constraint to the origin at 5 millimeters. The whole thing will be mirrored later to give us the total of 10 millimeters. Once again, we do not want to cut into the connector, but it's a little easier to position things now that we're starting to get some constraints in place. Just to help manipulate things, I'm going to arbitrarily lock the starting height of the outer wall of our cutting tool using a vertical distance constraint. We'll just call it 36 millimeters. Now I can manipulate the radius to decide how sharply or gradually I would like to make the cut. Something like that looks pretty good, so I'm just going to leave it there now. I could constrain this down or just leave it as is. I think I'm going to constrain the radius just for the sake of fixing things in place a little better. So close that sketch now and I just need to extrude it far enough to make sure it cuts completely through the cylinder. Overkill is always a good idea here and I'll make it symmetric so that it will cut through both sides of the cylinder and not just quarter it. I'll mirror it over the XZ plane. Just like that. Now I'll fuse the cut tool and its mirror together. Rename it to keep things straight. Now true to its name, I'm going to cut the nozzle with it. Now we have a promising looking shape. So that's the inner shape. I'll apply a thickness to make the nozzle itself. I'm going to hide away the connector just to make things easier. Select the cut and I'll select thickness. I'll select the two faces on the end to make it a pipe. I want the wall thickness to be 2 millimeters, just like for the connector. I bring back the connector and as you can see we now have a nice path all the way through everything. Looks like it's mating up pretty nicely. Wrapping this up, I'll just select the connector and the thickness that forms the nozzle, and fuse. Now I can export the whole thing as a step file for the slicer. I have Prusa Slicer open and I'm loading up the step file just saved from FreeCAD. It's standing on the connector now, not a bad choice for printing, though it's showing an instability warning. Clicking more tells me that there are floating bridge anchors. Going to the preview, I can move my view down until I see the bridging in blue. Looking at it, I can see I am asking it to make a curved bridge, which is impossible to accomplish. I could try to design that out. Or I can use the sketch of the connector in FreeCAD to create a solid sacrificial single layer and cut it out later. Or I can just turn on organic supports and support that little section of the print. In this case, the organic supports sound like the easiest option and won't be nearly as much trouble to remove as a full bridge to top. I'll just enable that and see what it will look like. That's pretty minimal. It'll be just fine. In the days before organic supports, it would want to build a wall-like structure all the way up to the bridge, which would be a slow to print and a pain to remove. Organic supports for the win. But before I print the whole thing, I want to do a test fitting. This will be both a sanity check on my measurements, but also figuring out how much clearance is needed for a good fit. Guessing that right the first try is frankly unlikely. 3D printing is often an iterative process. That's why even if your ultimate goal is to send it out to be printed in mass, it's not a bad idea to at least have a small desktop printer for prototyping. So I right click on the nozzle, go into add negative volume, and select cylinder. Now I can use a combination of move and scale on the cylinder to make it cover all but the initial few millimeters of the vacuum attachment. 
Since the display is necessarily a 2D representation of a 3D object, it's necessary to turn the view around and adjust a few times to make sure the negative space is in the right place. Now going into the preview, this looks about right. So I just need to send this to the printer and try it out. So here we have the test print, and I'm just going to fit it to the actual hose of the vacuum cleaner and see how it goes. It looks like the key fits pretty well. The diameter is just a bit tight. I can cram it on there, but it's not by any means an easy fit. If this was full length rather than being just about a centimeter high, good luck with that. It would take even more luck to get it back off again. Obviously, I'm going to have to add a little bit of clearance here. So I'll just wrestle this off and go back to CAD. So I'm back in FreeCAD. Because this is a parametric design, adding a bit of clearance will be fairly simple. Open the Fusion. In the Fusion, open the connector. Open the thickness and the extrude, and finally the sketch that forms the basis of the entire design. I just have to change the diameter of the circle from 45.7 millimeters to let's say 45.9 millimeters. I don't want an overly loose connection, just the slip fit. I can always go through another iteration if necessary. This is the simplest way of dealing with it. If necessary, I can add an extra clearance throughout the connector and then define a small ring with less clearance on the inside edge to act as a grip to hold the vacuum hose tightly. But I'll try the simple way first. As soon as I OK the change in diameter, I see down here at the bottom an error message, Recompute Fail. So I'll need to close the sketch and diagnose that. Looking down the list, I see Sketch 001 is having the problem. So opening sketch 001, it immediately tells me solver failed to converge. This is interesting. There's not much to this sketch, so there's not much to go wrong. I just recently switched to the very latest and greatest FreeCAD 0.21. I was a little bit surprised that when I was drawing the circle, the auto constraints chose a tangent constraint rather than the more conventional choice of equal for the radius. But since it's new, I decided to give it a chance, and here we are. So I'm going to select and then delete that tangent constraint. I'll pull the circle in just a little bit so that I can select the circle and the external geometry, and this time choose equal. That seems to have cleared all of the errors. Because the design is parametric, the rest follows from the change, so we're good to go. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.